I cannot believe that Call of Dragons came out almost three months ago, and it's been almost one month since I made a Call of Dragons video. I've had some of you guys commenting on my channel asking me, where are the Call of Dragons videos? And this video marks my return to the game. And when I say return, you may have think that I've left, but I actually haven't. I've pretty much been logging in every single day for the entire three months that I've been playing this game. I think that I missed maybe two or three consecutive login days, but for the most part if i come in here for my daily honor you can see that i have 74 consecutive logins so yeah i never actually quit call of dragons i've essentially been sitting back and observing how the game has sort of evolved over the past three months and one of the things about these city builder games is that they're a pretty big time commitment right that's a really big part of these games is being active and being online and what i wanted to make sure was that is this a game that i think is going to last a long time right because if i'm gonna spend a lot of time and by the way i've spent money on this account as well i want to make sure that it's you know time well invested okay and one of the things that i actually saw quite a bit on some of my call of dragons videos is that i was only playing the game so much because i was sponsored to do so and that's simply not true this is uh, the dashboard for creator zone which is basically the dashboard that was created by farlight games and lilith games for the content creators and this doesn't necessarily mean that you are sponsored or partnered for those games it just means that you are able to share your content on the official discord and things like that so here you could see that i've made 12 videos for call of dragons and i have almost 380,000 views for those videos which if you've watched any of them thank you seriously that it means a lot to me and here is the amount of money that i've made i've made zero dollars from the from all these views now obviously i make ad revenue on youtube but that is completely irrelevant to this so up until this point i've never been sponsored by call of dragons i've literally just genuinely been playing the game and just seeing how I like it I've been chilling okay and for a majority of those three months that this game came out right like the first month was the early game it was a fresh server things were happening uh the second month uh and pushing into the third I was in kvk and rise of kingdoms right so I was pretty much afk in call of dragons I was logging in doing my dailies and whatever uh, and then when I came back you know there was a, I guess a massive war on the server the alliance that I was in I don't I d disbanded or got de defeated or something or I don't really I honestly have no idea uh so I transferred to a different alliance I basically joined joined a smaller version of their alliance uh or a sub alliance or something like that just because I knew that I was going to be basically a passive player for uh for a while and so I have no idea what's going on on my server okay I genuinely have no idea the new season is coming in just a couple of days you can see here that I am Hall of Order level 20 24. but the reason that I mention all of this uh, is because that I wanted to make sure that if I was going to continue making content for this game it was a game that I thought had some longevity to it so in this video uh, I want to talk about sort of my final thoughts this is my final review of the game before I continue to make more content for it as a brand new associate for Call of Dragons so I will be making more Call of Dragons content and if you want to see more of that make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you're notified when I post it now the first thing that I want to cover here in this sort of review of the game is the world of Call of Dragons side note it's a million degrees in my room right now so if you hear my AC I apologize for that but before we go any further what's going on guys cheers okay so the world of call of dragons includes the map the environment right all the details the variety of the creatures here in the game the sound effects the music the lore and the story of call of dragons those all contribute to world building in my mind and the game does all these things extremely well with one exception that exception is in storytelling and we'll get to that in just a moment but as far as the open world goes it's absolutely gorgeous the trees are 3d they blow in the wind they cast shadows there is a massive variety of creatures here in the game it's actually insane you have different types of darklings which are basically the mobs out in the world there's a bunch of things here that I haven't even unlocked yet right uh, and of course a lot of these are just reskins of the same sort of model but I think they're different enough to make the game feel unique right we obviously have a bunch of the different uh behemoths here as well there is so much variety in the world as far as the creatures go and the enemies that it's it's great everything looks beautiful the music is so good it's so relaxing and all the little sound effects just add to the charm of the game the story and lore and the general world building in this game is definitely a huge improvement over the predecessor rise of kingdoms there's actually a real story here not just for the season but there's just individual storylines uh with the different characters and things like that so the world building and story and lore is great 
but there is one exception to this and that is the pacing of the story okay there is a lot of dialogue in this game and it's there's it's too much i'm sorry for my for my personal preference there's a there's too much dialogue and you can't skip it you can set it to auto to go through uh but you it you can't skip the dialogue and i cannot tell you how frustrating that is for a player like me who doesn't really care about that stuff right and i know that for a lot of people that's amazing and a lot of people only play some games for the story and the lore and that's that's great right and we need that in games like this but for my opinion I think that there's way too much dialogue and without the option to skip it it's just frustrating and I can imagine for new players that might be a, a turnoff if you don't really care about that stuff the next thing I want to talk about is the combat the war features in call of dragons obviously there is open field fighting just like in rise of kingdoms and other similar games to call of dragons and I think that this game does combat better than pretty much any other a uh, city builder game on the market right now right I think for a while rise of kingdoms was the leading example of what you should be if you want to be a modern city builder on mobile uh and right now I think it's call of dragons I genuinely think that it has the best open field um fighting from a technical and strategic perspective and it also does uh ranged combat better than pretty much any other game right obviously there are different ranges depending on the troop type that you're using so mages can attack from very far you have also archers who attack from more of a medium distance then you have melee range right uh, and all of this just adds to a much more strategic and dynamic combat system that also includes the use of different artifacts right and artifacts are some of them are sort of just like glorified active skills but others do really interesting things like the cloak of stealth for example you can use this to literally go invisible in the open world so other players like enemies can't see you which is really cool it gives you a nice ambush opportunity and it has like an hour cooldown so it's quite the long cooldown right so um the artifacts are interesting i personally wish that there was an ability for your artifacts to automatically trigger their active skill active skill uh or their rage skill once the ability you know was at max right once you had the most amount of rage or once you were able to cast it i wish you could toggle away for it to auto cast on target right i think that would be that would be better for me um i know that takes some of the the uh strategy away right like in some instances you may want to be targeting one thing and then fire your aoa aoe in a different direction um so i get that that might not be great but from my perspective you know I, I just it's just another button to press when i'm fighting something and i'd rather it just automatically do it right like in what scenario in pvp would i not use my active skill on the target that i'm hitting right there's certainly some examples where you may want to do something else uh, but for the most part i would say i want to just hit the thing i'm hitting and i don't want to have to think about pressing another button at the right time uh, I, that might just be lazy but i think that's one of the charms of rise of kingdoms is that it's dead simple you can't mess it up it's so so simple right there's a little bit of complexity with the movement uh, and maybe positioning your aoe but that's it and i think that that is massively more appealing to players than the complexity of some of the artifacts and again i don't think they should change it just give me the option to auto cast it on top of this you have the behemoth system here in the game where your alliance can essentially summon the behemoths that you've tamed and they're constantly actually upgrading this system i believe that uh, with one of the recent updates you are now able to assign to one of the members of your alliance the ability to sort of control the behemoth if i understand that correctly uh, and I think overall the behemoth system is amazing it's it's really good it adds another layer of complexity depth and strategy to the game and I think that that's amazing and so objectively all of this combined with the 3d terrain in the game right uh, we have like the different mountains the different slopes uh, you can attack over this with flying units and ranged units for example I can be attacking this uh, PVE content right here from over the ridge right you also have the ability to build barricades right and I think that the barricade system the road system all in all the combat in this game is just objectively more advanced more strategic and generally better than any other city builder that I have played I really don't have any complaints here other than the auto casting of the artifact abilities but in general it's great next let's talk about the graphics right the graphics the fantasy of the world is amazing the game looks and plays 
like it is a successor to rise of kingdoms it is just so fluid there the graphics are so much better and i think the high fantasy theme really works well for a game like this you have the humans you have the orcs you have the elves it is a tried and true trio that is incredible okay i love the theme i love the theme of the game and honestly i mostly played the game on pc and i haven't noticed any lag uh now of course if you're in like massive you know massive wars that could change but from what i've seen so far i haven't had any issues with lag stuttering you know terrible performance none of that okay and that is really impressive for a game that looks and plays significantly better than rise of kingdoms when rise of kingdoms came out the lag for kvk was sometimes so bad that it was unplayable you literally could not do anything uh you had to just close the game so this this is just super super superior to to rise of kingdoms in those ways however one little point of contention here is the hero design okay uh, now i will admit some of these heroes their design has grown on me since i've played the game but I still would say for a majority of the heroes I don't like I don't love how they look I'm gonna be honest okay uh so as much as I love the theme I think that the heroes could be designed better okay Lilia to me her her mascara her eye makeup is is running as if she's been crying or as if she you know it's yesterday's makeup and she's you know been up all night partying and her hair is a mess like to me th this is not uh, a character that I she's just not appealing to me at all right uh, as a 28 year old guy from the United States okay I don't care for this design in the slightest uh, and then if we look at you know heroes like Bakar for example he's obviously an orc he's supposed to be an orc he's supposed to be tough and he's okay right he, he's he's okay but this is what an orc can look like in world of warcraft right and world of warcraft has been around for decades at this point like 20 plus years or something like that right and to me this design of orcs is just way cooler it's just way cooler and so looking at this it just feels more like disney pixar's version of an orc and that's i guess maybe i'm not the target audience here but um i would love in the future if we got a patch update that just redesigned like a majority of these characters i and i'm not the only one who's saying this i've talked to many other content creators many other players feel the same way about these designs uh, and again maybe it's because i'm i'm old maybe this game is designed for players who are younger than 18 right um but for me like dude what's with the eye patch like this is they're just they're just not great they're just they're just not great I don't really know what to say it's just like that hairstyle it, I don't really know what they were going for I guess is what I'm trying to say and I can list on one hand the number of characters that I think have an actual cool design but I will say the diversity here is nice a lot of these characters look vastly different from one another you can't say the same for a game like rise of kingdoms right you have Sargon and Gilgamesh they look very similar you have I mean basically you have men and women from different uh, civilizations in history and characters from the same civilization might have a lot of similarities in their design and I think rise of kingdoms does a really good job in making characters look amazing but when it comes to diversity you cannot say that it's as it's even close right the diversity here is insane you have somebody like Craig then you just have wall deer from accounting basically okay and then you have a deer girl like it's the diversity here is great so there's something here for everybody um you even have Groot from uh, you know guardians of the galaxy right but overall the only problem I have with the graphics and the high fantasy style is the character design next let's talk about the monetization strategy of call of dragons uh and it's the same as rise of kingdoms it's it's literally the same uh there's really no there's no way to get around that um there's no crystal tech system in the game there is sort of a prestige system with the policies here but it's not nothing really compared to crystal technology from rise of kingdoms from what i've seen so for free to play players um i think jumping into call of dragons now is actually really good because it's still a very new game it's fresh there's a ton of events that are going to keep rolling out into the game and as a new game being able to take advantage of all the new game events is is just good for free to play players you also can't like fill your hospital right we have this elixir healing system which 
I honestly don't have a problem with I know that there was a lot of outcry regarding this I don't see the big deal with it I think it's it's fine it's definitely better than resource healing so the fact that you have a decent amount of elixir slash free healing you can do per day is great you don't have to worry about your troops you know overflowing that that hospital there's also less systems in the game compared to rise of kingdoms right so you don't have an armament system you don't have the crystal tech system you don't have the relic system you don't have an equipment system right there's there's so fewer systems that you have to worry about uh all you have to worry about right now is getting a hero and slapping an artifact on it leveling them up unlocking their skills and talents right and all those things I mean it's basically the same as rise of kingdoms now in the future will they add more systems I suspect they will I think eventually we'll see an equipment system um I don't have any insider knowledge or information about that I just know from experience I suspect there will be a new new systems in the game eventually I don't know if it'll be this year if it'll be in one two years I have no idea but for right now for new players that are free to play um it's better to get in the game while there are fewer systems so you have less that you have to worry about and focus on to be sort of competitive and also uh your mana right here your mana cannot be plundered um you also can't send it so this is kind of a double-edged sword but mana in this game is like gold in rise of kingdoms it is the hardest to come by resource and the fact that if your city gets hit you don't have to worry about losing all that hard-earned uh mana and I think that that is again for free to play players in a brand new game in a brand new environment I think that that is good now without the ability to send the uh, mana you can't have nine farms like players do in rise of kingdom so some hyper active rise of kingdoms players might see this as a downside and i totally understand that uh, it may limit the ability for players for free to play players to wage war or progress their account faster but the other side of the argument is that like if you have to micromanage you know five farms a day like that shouldn't be the expectation for competition for free to play players right like just because that's available to do doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing I feel like a lot of players you know who aren't willing to do that feel like they are sort of left behind left out uh they can't progress really so by just making that not a thing I think that kind of relieves some stress maybe for some players who feel like they're falling behind because they're not doing extra stuff uh but I can understand the argument for sure that um players free-to-play players may wish to have multiple farms for the purpose of, of sending mana and in this game you can't do it so that is a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at it it's also uh, harder to chain the darklings in the open worlds now at the beginning of the game I believe you were able to cast your artifact skill to attack uh darklings for free I don't remember exactly but that's not the case anymore um I think if you accidentally hit something you might be able to get it for free I don't remember I honestly haven't tried to chain barbarians in this game in a while but that's definitely a downside that you know free to play players can't really do that so that's unfortunate and there's also a weekly limit for the amount of gems that you can farm in this game now I think it's like a thousand or two thousand or something like that um it's more than most players are going to farm or will be willing to farm anyway but the, again for those players that do like to just do massive gem farming routes uh that's not going to be available in this game at least at the time of recording this so there are some advantages for free-to-play players of it being a new game with less systems and less things to worry about and also less time investment with having to micromanage many farms but there's also some downsides as well regarding the new player experience I do want to touch on that for just a moment uh the new player experience in this game is way better than rise of kingdoms like way better when you first start this game there's actually a story there's an amazing cinematic you know what you're doing you know why you're here and if you're going to start one game today like if you've never played rise of kingdoms and you've never played call of dragons and you were trying to pick between one or the other I would say pick Call of Dragons. Like literally, it's got a better new player experience, and the game itself is just improved. And one of the things that I took into consideration with continuing to post Call of Dragons content is that if we look five years from now, right? Five years from now, um, will Call of Dragons be in a better position than Rise of Kingdoms? And I feel like that could be the case right it it really could be because this game is going to age pretty well over the next five years whereas five years from now rise of kingdoms is definitely going to feel more outdated right I mean it already is starting to feel a little bit outdated for a lot of players and this is not going to suffer that same fate also which game is the developer more likely to continue pumping a ton of resources into right 
rise of kingdoms has been around for a while there's already a ton of systems in the game and i think that rise of kingdoms still has a healthy lifespan left in the tank and i still think that they are going to continue supporting the game really well i mean they just announced an open content creator program for rise of kingdoms right so they're obviously still supporting the game very heavily but this is their newest game and they've spent a ton of time money and effort uh building this game and because it is more advanced than rise of kingdoms i can see them spending more time and money and effort on this game in the future now of course it's two different studios we have lilith versus farlight obviously they're pretty much the same company there is developers for this game and developers for rise of kingdoms so it's not like it's the exact same people uh and so resources can be shared but at the end of the day like if if the company had to choose one uh i feel like they would probably put their eggs in this basket because it's just a newer game now i will say the downside for new players is that if you have already played rise of kingdoms uh there unfortunately are a lot of events that feel very similar okay they feel extremely similar and that isn't necessarily a good thing I mean on one hand it's nice that you actually will be able to play the game and know what to do but a lot of the events were kind of just reskinned from rise of kingdoms and so if you're spending time in the game you may feel like oh I've done this before I've been here before I've already done this a thousand times right when it comes to um like Alliance holiday events right defeating darklings to get special holiday items that drop from the darklings uh so you could put them towards decorating a certain thing um like these sorts of event events we've seen for years now in rise of kingdoms so that might you know even though it's a new game it still might have an, an a, a little bit of staleness to it if you've played games like rise of kingdoms before and i think that that is definitely going to be a challenge for them to overcome and also like because it's a new game it just doesn't have as many events as rise of kingdoms right we don't have like an arc of osiris we don't have a, a sunset canyon right we don't have those things and I think eventually they probably will come i don't imagine why they wouldn't i think those are very popular events in rise of kingdoms especially osiris league and arc of osiris right but uh for right now we don't have them so in general there's just more to do in rise of kingdoms so that is definitely a, a point we have to take away from call of dragons but this is a new game it's only been out for three months and i think it definitely will get there and with a new engine they probably have more things that they can do with this game right um like there was an event in the story right when i was going through like the main story quest I actually had to send one of my armies up on top of a mountain right to a very specific location and i had to launch my fireworks artifact which um is basically a cosmetic artifact it doesn't literally do anything other than those fireworks you just saw coming out of my hero right so the game essentially knows your exact position and what you're doing in that position and i feel like that will open up the doors to um, more complex events that are actually different than what we've seen in rise of kingdoms although we're just not there yet now at the beginning of this video i mentioned that this video marks my return to call of dragons and making call of dragons content as an official associate for the game but what i want to talk about is kind of how i'm going to integrate this right because one of the problems with games like rise of kingdoms uh and call of dragons by that extension is that they're very time consuming right um and so what i plan to do with call of dragons is continue to enjoy the game in between kvks for rise of kingdoms and then during kvk for rise of kingdoms that will obviously be my main focus i mean a lot of you are here for rise of kingdoms and i and i understand that but i do think that call of dragons is a game worth spending time on um i've spent about a thousand dollars on this on on this game in my own personal funds okay i am not i'm not getting anything for free from far lights okay even as an associate for the game i've never gotten any free in-game items they've never told me that i'm gonna get anything for free okay so all my investment all my time and money up until this point has all been mine it's been my decision to do that um so I, I do obviously feel strongly about the performance of this game in the future but it's just impossible for me at my current moment to invest as heavily in this game as I do in rise of kingdoms right so three videos a week for call of dragons it's just not possible for me right now as far as like the amount of time that I have it's just I just can't do it right so i will be sprinkling in call of dragons content if you are excited for that and you're here for it then great drop a thumbs up on the video so the algorithm recommends more of them to you and if you're not that's fine as well because i'm still gonna have tons of rise of kingdoms content coming up i guess the last thing that i want to talk about is will call of dragons kill rise of kingdoms um and if you had asked me when the game first came out i would say that it's 50 50 right uh, which is scary because a lot of us love love rise of kingdoms 
um but right now I actually don't think so I, I don't think that Call of Dragons can or will um kill quote unquote rise of kingdoms um i think that both games are in the same genre but they appeal to def different demographics i think rise of kingdoms uh, appeals more to an older audience players that are maybe 21 plus whereas this game might appeal to players who are you know 25 and younger right so there might be a little bit of overlap there but um in general i think that these games probably can and will coexist and based on some of like the google trends data that we've seen rise of kingdoms is is definitely outperforming call of dragons right now i mean this was uh, march 28th was the release of call of dragons and then a few days later the uh the, the popularity spiked i think there was probably a pretty big marketing campaign for the launch of the game uh and then you could see that they kind of competed for a, a week or so here and then so far i mean you know this was the uh, i think they announced possibly new heroes and also the new season right so uh there's some extra interest here but in general rise of kingdoms is i mean just based on the numbers okay this is this is not my opinion but based on the literal data rise of kingdoms is performing much better at least in terms of web search okay and whether or not you think web search is a good indication of interest in a game that's up for debate right this is not like number of active players i don't have that information right there could be a similar number of active players in both games i have no idea um, but based on this if you think that search interest is equivalent to general popularity um it seems like rise of kingdoms is significantly more popular right now so um again i think the future of call of dragons is very bright there's a lot here that i think can perform super well after you know within the first year right we still have a lot of ways to go in the long run but for right now there doesn't seem to be any ev uh, evidence that um call of dragons i love the little animations here that call of dragons can or will uh kill rise of kingdom so for me as a content creator i will be continuing to play call of dragons and making content for you guys um but i still will be focusing uh, a lot of my time and effort on rise of kingdoms and if anything changes in the future you guys will be the first ones to know so that's it those are my honest thoughts and opinions for call of dragons um i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below have you tried call of dragons uh are you still playing call of dragons if you did try it i would love to hear from you guys down there while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it does help out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm and subscribe to the channel click the bell to be notified the next time i upload another call of dragons video with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been OmniArc. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.